All right, guys. So there are many people in the knife community nowadays talking about knife flippers. And I feel like I don't want to just sit here and say, you know, oh, I thought of that first. I'm the first. I'm the best. But I will say in a video that I talked about um, not too long ago, I went over like the five EDC trends that I think should die in 2023. I feel like I did that video in 2022. Um, could be wrong. But anyways, it's been a little bit, but I did think it would be worth talking about what I think of knife flippers in the community as a whole. Now, there are many people in many different, uh, you know, like thought processes on people who flip knives as a whole in the community, and there are people who regularly do it. So, what do I think of them? Well, as I said in that video previously, I really do not love the idea of people who explicitly buy knives with the intention of selling them for higher prices. Now, I will say this is where I, I'm pretty involved in the knife buying or I should say secondary knife market. I have bought most of the knives that you guys see on this channel have been bought on the secondary market and I usually get or aim for good deals. Now, sometimes I do pay, you know, a good price for a knife that I really want and or a knife that I really want to showcase on the channel. So I'm definitely not afraid to spend, you know, a few hundred, even up to like 600 bucks on a knife so long as it's worth it. Um, however, in my experience working in the, or like buying, selling and trading on the secondary market, I will say um, there are some like knife flippers per se that I do actually appreciate. And I think one thing, I made that video before I had bought and sold knives as much as I have now. So in my opinion, you know, if you're buying and selling knives for a fair price, even if let's just talk about the Microtech standard issue and the Stitch Ramlock, right? Very desirable knives. They can easily fetch $500 right now, even though there's no reason they're not worth $500 at all. Um, but because they're so collectible and desirable, you know, people are willing to spend upwards of, you know, 350, you know, easily $500 on one. Um, and so what I will say is there are definitely people who I appreciate in the knife community who go out of their way to buy knives um, during drops, knowing that people cannot get get them or get to them in time. And this is less common with certain knives that are very hyped up. But I have been fortunate a number of times where people have purchased knives from drops that I was either unable to participate in or that I couldn't get in on fast enough. And then they sell those knives for at or even just a little bit low uh, below cost. So basically what that means is <clears throat> say they, you know, buy a knife for $550 and then they end up selling it for $550 or sometimes, you know, $575. And I mean, I understand some people want to make a living, but within reason, I actually don't necessarily hate people that buy, you know, knives that off of hot drops so long as they don't flip the knives in the traditional sense of saying, you know, that they bought a knife for, you know, let's say $500 and they're going to sell it for $700. Or another one that's a really poignant example is the uh, REC or REC Avocado Shamans, Mannixes, and Paramilitary 2s. They are that FDE blade coat uh, with OD green blade handle, or sorry, knife handle. Those things sold originally for about 200 $250, I want to say, I think it was like $250. And then you go and you look at them on eBay and they're going for upwards of $400. There is no way, no no offense to those who own Shamans and or Manix 2s. I own a Manix 2 myself, but there is no way that a Manix 2 will ever be worth $400 unless it is like christened by Sal Glesser himself or some, you know, like ridiculous thing or maybe if it's made out of Damascus steel. But, you know, like honestly speaking, a Manix 2 is not a $400 knife. And it's not to say that it's a bad knife. Like, I love my Manix 2 personally. I think it's a good knife. It's just not worth $400. Like, these are good knives, just not $400 good. Like, when you're starting to talk about in the territory of $400, and I realize that Umnum Zahn is more than $400, um, but, like, this is once we start talking about $400 knives, like this is what the expectation should be, right? Like this is around that price point. Um, so this is like a $400 knife 
proper. Now, granted, once again, the Mnemson is closer to $500 plus, dollars, but, you know, this is what the expectation should be, not this. This is not the expectation at $400. So, anyways, when it comes to knife flipping, I actually don't entirely hate those flippers that work to get good deals for people who couldn't be in on drops. Now, there is always the contra argument that knife flippers pollute drops. And so what that means is, say I was trying to buy at drop, you know, I was trying to get one. Well, that knife flipper has now got that knife that I was trying to go after, right? So there is this kind of kind of back and forth between, you know, flippers gobbling up the market to resale versus people who are genuinely trying to buy the knife out of the drop. So for me, it is always a mix. I tend to be not super concerned about it unless, once again, they're trying to sell it for an incredibly high margin and or the only other condition that I dislike is people who genuinely make flipping like a huge full-time job like if they are like once again if you just so happen to get something like let's say you got an umnums on uh, and you know say it came off a hot drop right like you just got it and it it was a knife that you were excited for and you didn't like it so you end up selling it for a little bit more than you paid for it right um you know that's that's one thing but if you are buying like one or two or three, especially things like say the Ramlock Stitch. Say you buy three Ramlock Stitches. You're obviously not going to keep all three Ramlock Stitches, right? You're buying with the intention to sell the other two at minimum, maybe all three of them. So the intention or the intent behind buying it, I think is very important. Once again, if you happened to buy an expensive knife and you just didn't like it, I think it's totally fair to sell it. Once again, as close to at cost as possible. Now for me, in my opinion, once again, I tend to chase deals on secondary. So basically all of the knives that I've purchased, um, I've gotten knives or bought knives that one, the buyer did feel comfortable selling them. Like I'm not one of those shrewd negotiators that's willing to burn bridges to get a good deal. But if someone feels comfortable selling it at a good price, then I feel comfortable doing that deal. And oftentimes, you know, uh, when it comes to the secondary market, like the places I go to, the knife forums, I'll keep looking through knives and looking through knives. And that's why, you know, I get like a lot of comments about like, you know, hey, you should pick up a Spartan Harzy folder, right? And so, you know, it's been months of people telling me to get one of these knives. And I only recently acquired one because I found the knife for me. And that this wasn't necessarily the cheapest Harzy folder out there, but it was just the best deal in my opinion. Like I got a good price on a knife that is normally very expensive. So, you know, it, I ended up paying more than some of the other Harzy folders that I found at the time, but it was just the best deal out there. So for me, like, I tend to be attracted to good deals. So usually I kind of am not really honestly the target market to a lot of knife flippers because I, I don't particularly care, especially with my knife collection. Like I have over 40 knives for EDC. I don't particularly need any one knife or any one brand or any one model that much because at the core, I have plenty of knives. I could carry a different knife every day for over a month, right? So I'm not trying to necessarily like flex my status or anything, but I'm just saying that, you know, like I'm not particularly motivated to say, oh, I need that knife. Like, let's just say the Winter Blade Co. Factor, you know, like it's a cool magnetic knife, um, still made in China, so I'm not particularly interested, but it's one of those knives that once again was very hyped up went for a lot of money uh, on secondary. And it's like, I looked at them, I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. But a lot of people were charging so much for them that I was like, you know, I don't really need this. Like there's plenty of other knives out there that I feel are better deals. So, you know, that Winter Co uh, or Winter Knife Co, whatever factor, um, you know, goes for about as much as a McNeese Mac 2, right? So I'd rather have a McNeese Mac 2 than a uh, Winter Knife Company or whatever factor. You know, it's a cool magnetic knife, but it's kind of gimmicky in my opinion. And so I would rather just have something that honestly gives me the fizz, so to speak. And so, you know, I'd rather have some like an Omnimzon um, 
So as far as it goes, you know, like I'm not afraid to pay the amount of money. Like obviously this Umnum Zon costs more than the winter factor, you know, uh, it's a better blade overall in my opinion. And so I'm not afraid to pay more money for a better product, uh, I guess is the end thing. But at the same time too, I, I do think it's really important and worth noting that it's like when it comes down to knives and like what you should purchase or shouldn't purchase, really look at like, um, what you're getting and try to stay away from hype knives and people who are way overpricing things. Once again, uh, like with my Strider SNG, I tried to get in and totally missed my chance on the drop that I ended up getting that knife from. But the guy who I got it from, he only wanted like $20 more than what it was on the drop. So for me personally, an extra $20 uh, wasn't enough to dissuade me from that. And so like, I think I paid like five, 70 for the knife and so originally it sold from strider for 550 i paid 570 i want to say something in, somewhere in that range 570 and then you know honestly it's like about a 600 hundred dollar knife so i'm okay and comfortable with that overall you know situation so that's kind of how it works for me um you know everyone's different but i will say i do stay away from genuinely i do stay away from people who are ardently like making knife flipping their business um and trying to really gouge people the one exception i will say is like if someone makes knife flipping their business and they still offer really good deals and prices then i'll still work with them like once again I'm only here for deals. If I see a good deal on a knife that I want or it's rare, hard to obtain, and it's a good price, then I'll buy it. So that's gonna me. And like I said, this is my experience, honestly, having bought most of my knives off the secondary market. Um, I would say that I definitely know, um, like this is my strategy or this is like how I feel, my mindset, I guess I should say, to knife flipping and buying knives on the secondary. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.